Are you sick of those damn political crusaders? The anti-libertarian libertarian party? Sick of the violence and coercion that makes up the status servile society with seemingly no escape? Are you looking for real practical solutions to increase your personal freedom and your invulnerability to coercion? If so, kick off your shoes, come inside the polyethylene A tent, and let's talk Vanu. Join your hosts, Shane and Kyle, as they further explore this freedom strategy and develop it into the modern day. You're listening to the Vanu Podcast. Hey folks, uh, Shane from the Vani Podcast here. Uh, I've got Kyle um, actually on the line, which uh, many may be surprised to hear. But uh, anyway, uh, as anyone who's been following what's been going on, uh, a lot of you have been uh, uh, critically involved uh, in uh, helping him uh, move forward uh, with a a very big change in his life. So anyway, Kyle, the floor is yours, my friend. Hey, everybody. I know it's been several years since probably some of you have heard my voice, but I'm still alive and kicking, at least for now. I just want to say I have been deeply both moved and humbled by everybody's help and assistance with regard to the unfortunate uh, downturn in my personal life. And I first wanted to say before anything else happens that the funds have been put to good use. Uh, They have already been used. As of today, I am not homeless. Um, I am in, I have adequate shelter. Um, I actually finished, completed uh, the move from the old apartment. So I was able to actually salvage some things before the uh, old landlord was able to take possession of it. Um, So everything is fine as far as that goes because you guys helped. You guys stepped in. And again, I just want to make this very publicly clear. I do not intend on making this a habit. This is should be a one-time thing due to a very unusual set of circumstances, which I'll be more than happy to lay out for all of you exactly what happened. But I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, what you guys did mattered. And I should know because I was the one who made sure those funds went to where they needed to so that I did not end up on the street like a vagrant. So I wanted to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for coming through, especially when I was in the middle of a time crunch and really did not have many options available to me. So again, all of you who, who decided to give funds, maybe some of you who it may, may have been a little bit more painful than others to give some of those funds. Thank you so much. And again, um, if there's any way I can either uh, figuratively uh, or, or otherwise literally uh, pay it forward or pay it back or whatever, I'm more than happy to do that in whatever way, shape, or form. But as far as the immediate assistance goes, it was very much appreciated, very much put to good use, and it made, and most importantly, it made a difference. And this is not something I'm used to, where people uh, actively help me, especially when I'm in a tight spot, which I was, because I was very much at risk. And you guys were part of that overall effort. Yes, from the financial side of it, but you guys were part of that effort um, to to make sure I was okay. So I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart, more so than words can express. Um, I'm actually going to try not to get, get into tears here because it was still and still is a very painful time for me. But it made a difference, and I want everyone to just understand that. Okay, so basically, the circumstances were essentially this. My wife and I of five years, um, I thought we had a pretty decent marriage going, especially ever since the nasty breakup with my girlfriend of 13 years prior to that. And actually, I originally met my wife during that last part of that last year of the ex-girlfriend, so they actually met each other. Story for another time. (laughs) But suffice it to say... Uh, not long after we dated and eventually married and so forth. Uh, we got a marriage certificate, not a license, which apparently has come up recently again because my insurance carrier decided to make an issue of it. 
it's stupid status stuff that hopefully I'll be rearranging my affairs so I won't have to deal with that so much. In any case, <laughs> what happened was that um, me and my wife were having some difficulties, I would say, especially over the past year or so. Um, I do want to state publicly that, unfortunately, because of a combination of some job stress as well as some perhaps some misplaced priorities where I was trying to get us uh, approved for a house by paying off some debts and so forth, um, I was neglecting my wife in more ways than one. And I thought towards the end of the last year, we were reconciling. That was the impression that I was under. So I went and took her out for a nice date on New Year's Eve. And during that date on New Year's Eve, she announced that she wanted a marital separation. Just like that. And um, turns out in the following week she got her relatives to move out all of her property in that first week in january meanwhile i had no place to go other than just to hole up in what used to be our bedroom i was very lucky uh despite still working overnights and sleeping no more than two to three hours a night at most i was very lucky to sign a lease on january 12th so between New Year's Eve and January 12th, I was able to secure a place, but where you guys helped in was uh, financing the security deposit so that lease could happen uh, ultimately. And yes, unfortunately, I had to do a little bit of, of shuffling around, but I was able, and a little bit of robbing Peter to pay Paul, but I was able to make everything count because of what you guys did. And then I was able to move in, and then um, there were some moving costs and all that which I'm still having to pay back some of the, some of those costs. But like I said, what you guys did matter. That was the critical juncture point. Um, I was eventually able to move in what I was able to salvage because she left a lot of things behind, very valuable stuff, either to keep, either things I'm going to keep or possibly give away or possibly sell. Um, but she basically just abandoned me. And the worst part is, everybody... I hate to say this publicly, but it is relevant. Up until I started neglecting her, um, we were trying to have a child. No child obviously happened. Um, but basically, my personal life got blown completely to shit um, on New Year's Eve. So that's the reason for the time crunch, as well as the fact that we had intended to renew our lease uh, and told the landlord that, but it was between that relatively brief time when we first told them to then, because it takes the landlords a while to, you know, draw up the paperwork, and that's when she decided to drop the bomb of, I want a separation. She then went and gave 30 days notice, and that was at beginning of January, so that's why there was the reason for the time crunch. Again, I don't think this is going to be a repeat performance of any kind. I have no reason to believe that. Um, like I've been telling many of my friends privately, and I'll say this publicly here, uh, I need to stop having girl problems. <laughs> I need to stop having romance problems because this is getting ridiculous to the point where, um, oh, that was the other thing too. I will say this publicly. Uh, during about the same time, she, she also cleared out all of our savings. That was the other reason for uh, making the request for, for financial assistance as well, because yeah, I was so, starting over with basically. Yeah. So, so I guess the, the only thing I'll jump in, I only jump in and say is that, um, I mean, this was not this was not a normal scenario. Um, like, I, like I don't know what a normal scenario is, but um, this was um, there were a million and one better ways to do this. Um, is the way that I'll put it. Um, and this was the absolute fucking worst. So, um, like, that's it. Yeah, so so just to kind of close out this heartfelt thank you to everybody, there's a little bit more insider baseball um, that will remain private. Yeah. But as far as what I would be willing to mention publicly, those are the facts as I know them. And... It it's so January this past month was pretty hellish. Now that we're into February, as at least at the time of this recording, um, there's still some fallout here and there, but things are much more stabilized. And I'm I've got a roof over my head, quite literally. And um, 
and we have rules of contact, uh, once a week phone calls and, and f- limited contact and so forth, because at this point, the chances of reconciliation are growing slimmer by the day. And I hate to say that, but unfortunately, this is what five years of marriage uh, has got me. So I want to thank everybody for coming through when they did. Um, the, this, it, it really moved me. It really did. Um, and you guys are the best. Seriously, you are. And so I just want to thank everybody yet again. Yeah. So, so I guess the um, the, the last thing I'll, I'll, I'll mention, Kyle, is, in, in regards to this, is um, just it, it's um, is that the Pasnia Network. I, I know is it's a surprise to everybody. Um, a surprise to me that it exists the way that it does now. Um, so, I guess um, more importantly. Um, like, would you have ever from from your previous experiences? I know, like, uh, with with uh, the Texans for Accountable Government and uh, other organizations like that, that that you try you tried the organization and you know you know working with others type thing before, right? And it never fucking worked out for you. Um, Correct. But um, this is where um, I'm so happy that we like we are in this point of contact again because. Um, I heard like I, I heard you then and 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 I experienced the same things, but I knew there could be something better, something different. And it's like it's not only like uh oh it's gonna be here in the future. It's like no, it's it's here right now. Um this network is here right now. Um the map and directory exists right now. Pasnia list, which I haven't actually even talked to you about yet, Kyle, which is like the Craigslist for the second realm, that type of thing. Um that exists on on, on the Pasnia site. Um, open to anybody, no account or anything. Um, so yeah, like it's, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, it's pretty wild that, that this sort of solution exists because it did not exist for, I mean, I didn't know anything about this. You didn't, obviously. Um, you folks in this network didn't. Um, but, uh, I guess that, that just shows like, The, the the so like mutual aid is a real fucking thing and and I I, I kind of not talked about this earlier, um I'm not even like I I kind I wouldn't want to be called an inner capitalist right now because not because I'm not in favor of commerce and, and and you know balancing on both sides or anything like that but the like in terms of like inner capitalism or um, commerce or things like that today like that's that's far far stretch away from just individuals trading with each other. Um, like we're far away from that, that line when you've got business licenses and insurance and all that sort of bullshit, you know, um, like you're far away from just doing business with a person. Um, <clears throat> but with the passing network, you're literally doing business. You, I mean, it's like, like that's the same with the fucking way to put it. I hate putting it that way because, um, yeah, you do, you, 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 you're dealing with just a person, um, an individual. And that's what's great about it. And not only is is that the best part about it, but they've if they've gotten to this point, this is a small network. There are not that many. I, I don't know what people think. Like, um, I never think about it, but like what people think like podcast downloads are for the Bonnie podcast. I'm not going to say any numbers, but um, it's probably similar to when Bonnie Life was being put out in 1973. I guess I'll put it that way. Um, it's probably very similar. But um, the people in this network. Um, this is quality. Come on, quality. And the folks that are listening to this at this point still, I mean, it's 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 crazy. It's like the the very first Bonnie Fest here at, at Pasnia. Um, yeah, the the highest quality individuals were here. Um, you know, at least as far as the U.S. There are a lot of good folks in Europe that, you know, it's obviously a little bigger of a venture. But um, I guess the question to that, Kyle, was. Um, I don't know. You've not had good experiences before, so um, I mean, the, like this. This was obviously a last ditch effort, right? Um, you probably never expected yes. it to work, or at the very least, it would come up with amounts that would be like some fraction yeah. of what the security deposit amount was. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of the best I was hoping for, and the fact that you guys, you guys, not some talking head on the TV, not some. Don't take us the wrong way, Shane, but not some talking uh, uh, talking head on a microphone or whatever. Um, but you guys I didn't made this happen yeah. collectively. 
Yeah. And all I'm saying is, as just as a feed, part of a feedback loop to you guys, you guys made this happen. So yeah, mutual aid is a real thing. And just to be perfectly frank, had it not been for my for my wife clearing out our savings, I wouldn't have even have asked anybody. I just would have tightened the belts, um, kind of run up the credit card, which unfortunately I've had to do anyway. Um, and and I just would have just kind of I would have handled things that way. But it was the fact that I can't I could not a, run up a, the credit it was card a, it that was a fast. Really, it was a really bad situation, man. The time crunched. It was the time crunch, especially um, because if that if that security deposit money wasn't that you guys financed, if that security deposit money wasn't ready to go, I would have lost uh, closing out on this place that I am now sitting in. Which actually uh, the uh, the general environs, the place that we're actually under a thunderstorm right now. And there is no dripping anything. So had you guys not done it, I would have been out in this shit homeless. So thank you guys. You you saved one person from being out on the streets. So thank you. So seriously, so you guys I, made a difference here. You did. And um, what I will say, I do actually manage the Monero General Fund now. But the Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin General Fund for Pasney, I do not manage. But um, regardless, this is the sort of shit when when you donate to the uh, the Pasnia, uh Bitcoin General Fund or the Pasnia General Monero Fund. This is what you're what you're contributing to. Like this is this is real shit. Like uh, whether it's Josiah or whether it's me handling this, these are real, pe real people that need real you know real help. Um, and or um, and even if not help. Um, this is the other good part of it too. Is that uh, you know, if you're trying to come, if you're trying to, uh, you know, if you need like three hundred dollars for a fucking uh, a chicken coop or something like that, we'll help you fund that too. That's cool. Um, it's like the, the these funds are are, are so are, are so vast and so wide. But in this case, this is truly one of those um, that, yeah. I mean, Kyle, none of this shit would have existed without you, man. Um, it really wouldn't have. Um, pseudonyms being a, a staple of this. I didn't know about pseudonyms back in 2014. Um, you were the one that taught me about that. You were the one that taught me about security culture. You were the one that taught me about, um, all of these things are foundational of Pasnia now. And this is why, um, like I, 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 um, the most I will say is that I've talked to a lot of individuals and, um, <clears throat> they are very concerned in the digital realm, but they're much less paranoid than what you or I are um, in this realm. So, like, it, it's 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 a blessing. Um, like the um, all of the like the all of those principles that you shared um, in your book and in, in your book, just below the surface, a guide to security culture. Um, and you've also got one endless fan of hope um, on the Elio Publications Library for anyone who wants to to uh, you know to, to snag a copy of those. Um, but, uh, yeah, those are out there. And I mean, you, you've been on top of the shit for a long time. Um, you definitely have. Um, so I, I, like I, I, for, for your part, like I, I understand, um, like from your angle, like I, I, I understand the, the gratitude, like I would be in the same position myself, but what I want to emphasize to you at this point is that, um, for me and the folks that I talked to, um, that did a lot of this, it was kind of a repayment. It was kind of a rebalancing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, it wasn't. Sure. It wasn't. Of course. It wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't like a donation. It was like uh, all of the shit that you gave them over the years that they could not get anywhere else. They were just trying to rebalance that. Sure. And in that sense, I understand that. Um, the way I always viewed it was kind of like emergent technologies, right? Uh, when you're building an infrastructure, certain things have to be in place before other things even have a possibility to be in place. Or to put it very simply, you can't have um, even cable TV without electricity, right? So like, and so there's building blocks, right? You've got your more fundamentals and then you have the somewhat more sophisticated stuff that re does rely on, on your basic building blocks, but then uh, you can kind of develop it further from there. And, you know, to be perfectly honest, I never expected to be paid for anything. 
Um, I was just more concerned about the future of humanity and so forth. Well, of um, but unfortunately, yeah. I was trying to focus on my personal. And, and then, of course, over these past five years, let me let me explain one other thing too, just publicly, just for everybody, just to give some context. Um, these past five years, I was also trying to focus more on trying to have a family, and I was looking forward to being a dad. So I was trying to focus more on like hearth and home, me personally, and now that that's. Now that that's not going to happen, I can now refocus uh, my efforts elsewhere. And uh, so, yeah, I guess you guys are probably going to be hearing more from me f- rather sooner than even I had originally anticipated. So I guess I guess out of every disaster or tragedy, I guess there's always some uh, wellspring of hope. I let me put it a different let me, let me put this a slightly different way. That's still bittersweet. I I had a pregnancy scare with the ex-girlfriend back in 2007. No child resulted in that, but I was still in college at the time. However, parallel universe had things turned out differently and assuming everything Oh, that did happen then. More or less hurt and some other my oh, my fuck. right, my kid would be like what? 16, 17 right now, something of that effect. If I'm doing my math right from 2007 to now. So obviously my life didn't turn out that way, either with the pregnancy scare with the ex-girlfriend or with the child that I was trying to have with my wife. So, hey, let it never. And by the way, just just and I'll say this publicly. If it does turn out that I'm going to be a lifelong bachelor from this point out, if, if that is what ends up happening long term, let it ne- And I'll say this now in, you know, year of our Lord, 20, uh, 2024, let it never be said I never tried to have a family. Because I've tried it twice. Now. Uh, I, let's just say I tried it at least once. One good try at it, right? Um, yeah, yeah. And it just didn't so, work out. So, so what and I've had, yeah. So, so, so what I will jump in with, and this is more relevant, relevant to 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 more than just you, Kyle. Um, but what I will say is that um, the environment you surround yourself in, the people you surround yourself with, and I guess the expectations, behaviors um, that you've inherited that you may not even actually recognize or realize um those all play a fucking major part into anything that you go into so um as as far as um relation like uh as far as for i mean anyone generally anyone generally but um so kyle i've always said about you that like you were the most radical um and 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 anyone that loves you like People that a lot of people that contributed to you, um, the reason they did was because you were solid on your fucking principles, um, just super solid on your principles. Um, so what? So I guess what I will say to you at this point is that you need to be more rigid about your principles in your personal life. Um, and to that, yeah. I guess to, to to that point, to that point, and and I don't want to just you know just like say should should's not a good word, but. Um, I guess what what I'm saying is just be more um so so don't worry about don't worry about women for like 5 years. That's the best thing I ever did was just fucking forget about that shit for like 5 <laughs> years. For completely fucking forget about it for 5 years and figure out like you, you already know. I know what your principles are, brother. We've talked so many fucking hours over the years. I I know I, I know it hasn't what, changed. It hasn't it hasn't exactly. But I was going to teach my kid the same things so, too, by the so, way. <laughs> well, yeah, I know you would. But <laughs> the, the the women the women don't don't match with that. So what I, what I will tell you is no. just 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 kind of at least for a year or two, just kind of decompress and figure out where you are, like like where, where your mind is at, what your what your actual needs and di- desires are outside of a woman, you know, um, that sort of a thing. Get a baseline for where you're at, and then. Beyond that, I don't think you have to just disregard women entirely, but you have to find the ones that are as radical as you are, and the only fucking place you're going to do that is in the second realm. I think there's a lot of wisdom to what you're saying. I I don't disagree with it at all. Um, it, and, and that's the thing, too, is I'm not quite an eligible bachelor yet, uh, but that being said, yeah, I, I think... 
I think in some sense I'm going to be kind of a, uh, to use a, I'm going to come up with a paradoxical term unless someone else can come up with something better, but I guess I'm going to be kind of a, a cloistered social butterfly in some sense where I'm just going to be busy just doing a lot of things that don't involve me incurring, shall we say, any more girl problems. And I want to be very clear about know. something too, especially for the more political types. I'm not in favor of this MRA MGTOW stuff. Um, there's a lot of, that would be almost a topic for another time, a separate podcast and all that, but thank you for mentioning that's that, not brother. where I'm coming from at all. Yeah, I'm not coming. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I tried to have a family and it didn't work. Um, a, at least for now. You just gotta, so just gotta find a, find a better scenario, man. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. And again, I just want to thank everybody for, for, for helping. And, and also not only that, but also proving to yourselves that, Mutual aid is real when you wanted to make it real. Yeah, it's as simple as that, right? Yeah, it's uh yep. yeah. If we we've talked about Kyle before, you know, voting with your feet or voting with your money, um, and things of like things like that. But this is this is the actual real application uh, where you where there's no middleman, um no bullshit like that. It's literally just, yeah, it's, yeah, just helping. Um, just mutual aid. But, like, health and things like that. This, so, so, Kyle, there, there, there's a service on, <clears throat> there's a service called Crowd Health. And um, it's a, uh, it's health insurance, essentially, is, is uh, I guess, the, the two words to, if you have to put a label on it. But um, what they do is they have like a they have a monthly subscription for their um, you know for their members, but everything else is voluntary. So you have like uh, so one of the most recent examples is um, they couldn't get covered by their conventional pharmaceutical plan, and one of these crowd hold folks, they had a crowd crowd hold representative. That went out to them for this major fucking surgery, and because CrowdHealth isn't actually health insurance, they can negotiate. They can actually negotiate with the healthcare providers. So the differences in costs, and I know you've seen this before too, Kyle. But um, like uh, they'll charge like a thousand dollars for a saline shot or something like that, like some just something fucking stupid. Because like it's health insurance that does this, health insurance that does this sort of shit. So, like, crowd health is, like, the free market version. And they also have one you can pay in Bitcoin, my, my brother. You can pay in Bitcoin for your health insurance. And it's basically, it's, it's basically like, and I say health insurance, quote, unquote. It's not, quote, unquote, health insurance. But it's better than that shit. And, and maybe, and maybe that's another thing, too, I want to mention briefly here. It's, it's not just about the money, strictly speaking. It, it, you got you guys have restored what fledgling faith I still had in humanity because look I know I know like the almighty dollar is not what it used to be uh, in some ways we're all familiar with the economic stuff I'm not going to regurgitate that here that can be regurgitated elsewhere I'm just simply saying some of you guys this was more of a sacrifice than for others and yet you were still willing to do it and I know that comes from a place of conviction. And so I deeply respect all of you that made the effort here to make sure I didn't go homeless. Um, even, even at some cost to yourselves, even in, an, even in a non-financial sense. So that has... So what you guys did for me, let me put it this way. What you guys did for me was not just prevent me from going homeless. You also gave me some hope for the future. That if, you, in other words, if you guys were willing to do this for me when I was hard up with my one situation that I've already just explained, then maybe you guys and others like you would be. I would also say, even in a non-financial sense, willing to put your, where your your money where your mouth is when there are real, legitimate needs and or emergencies of even worse scenarios that may very well be coming down in possibly the near future, uh, depending how things go. Um, because we need heroes. 
And I don't say that lightly. I mean, did, can we please dump like the Marvel entertainment stuff? We need actual heroes, people who make sacrifices and do the right thing, no matter the naysayers around them, no matter what various statists are saying that, oh, no, we'll be your saviors, no matter whatever the propaganda line is. We need actual, real, bona fide, you know, uh, uh, you know elbow grease heroes. And you guys, I think, are, are at least counted among them. Seriously. I guess, I, and I mean this in the most positive way, but I guess when it's my time, I can die happy then, knowing that at least the sacrifices I made back in the past at least inspired other people to do the right thing, ironically to help me in what later became the future, which is now the present. But I'm, I'm glad it, it made a difference to other people. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, somebody has to be the lightning rod at some point. Um, but more, but this is not really about me. This is about all of us together collectively working towards well, something you, oh, resembling yeah, a stable sure. future. And for you have sure. to start somewhere. Yes. Yes. hundred percent. And here's, and here's one other thing I kind of want to promise people for our, everybody that donated, um, if we ever have a chance to meet in person and I do intend on traveling more as soon as I get my finances more stabilized long-term and things are just more stable in general and I'll be traveling a lot more. Wait, um, I want to, I want to give huh? each of you guys, I want, yeah, yeah, that too. Um, I want to give each of you guys a hug because this, because you guys came through for me when most people I knew personally uh, told me to go take a hike. Some of them even said it to my face. So, um, this past month, I really found out who my friends were, who my actual allies are. And it was kind of a great reshuffling. Um, I would say not, not every, not every single person, but I would say most. And I was pleasantly surprised. Um, even local people here that helped me move, uh, physically like furniture and stuff. Uh, cause there was some stuff I just could not move by myself, even though I did most of it. Um, that also kind of gave me some new faith and some hope. So yeah, for all you guys that, uh, uh, you know, in, in spirit of mutual aid, uh, donated, if we ever meet in person and I'll try to make every conceivable effort, um, I, I want to give each of you guys a hug. I think that's the very least of what I can do, uh, given the circumstances and such. <laughs> now I got to figure out, uh, the two cars that I've got are basically one of them is literally an antique. The other one is up in two years away from being an antique, according to the laws of the state of Texas. So let me, and it's also been having, I've also had to disconnect the battery on the truck recently. So I'm having like new sets of problems come up, but let me give me some time to, to, to get all that kind of sorted. I might even have to spring for a new car. Um, but now also that the job situation is also stabilized too, I'm having, I'm just now starting to get some new paychecks coming in. So let me at least get some stuff squared, squared away and I'll have to put in some PTO requests because must ask the bosses for time off to go have a life apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as I get that all squared away, then yeah, I, I can make, I can start making plans for like a couple months ahead of time and course end of year and so forth. Yeah. Dude, um, that, I cannot, that so... should be doable. Cool. So I cannot fucking wait. Um, Scratch was here for Vonifest last year. It's, it's, it's just a pseudonym, Scratch. Um, he knows who he is. He's going to listen to this. But um, I told him, like, I was like, you're fucking Kyle. Like, you have to be Kyle. Um, so I'm, I'm <laughs> super excited for you guys to meet because you guys are just as paranoid as each other are. Um, it is fucking amazing. <laughs> um but yeah, fair enough. Anyway, I just want to just thank everybody. Uh, I know this was kind of a long thank you, I suppose. But um, but seriously, you guys came through for me when most didn't. So like I said, if I ever get a chance to meet any one of you donators in person, you're getting a hug from me. Or, or, or if you don't, or if you guys specifically don't want hugs, we can do some sort of variation. But that's what I'm offering. It's the least I can do. Anyway, yeah, it was uh, great, brother. Um, great. The, the Bonnie podcast is new and restored. And Seems like you're kind of back, Kyle. So that's that's a blessing. Well, yeah. I mean, you and I. I'll say this publicly. Uh, you and I have been discussing in private some potential uh, podcast ideas. So yeah. Um, I guess combination of circumstances plus some other things I was putting off and then shouldn't have put off, and then personal life went to hell. 
now it's just kind of like, well, now I have all this uh, extra time available now that the job situation is more or less stabilizing. So um, pretty much at this point, unless, you know, the bludge decide to give me a job and I say yes, other than that. Uh, and by the way, they have been trying to recruit me, by the way. I'm going to say that publicly, even lately. Um, they have been trying to recruit me something hard, multiple agencies. So I don't know how hard up they've been ever since uh, defund, but if they're broaching me, the bludge, the government police, different agencies, different departments. Back on, um, back on you context, know they're Kyle, in deep shit. Kyle's working private security, so just quick few words. Anyone has no idea what's going on right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, so unless something really strange like that happens, otherwise, yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be having some some extra time that I didn't originally anticipate. So I might as well put it to good use, and that's all I'll say for now.